Hey, Steve here. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about compressor pedals. I've been asked by a few of you of um, how compressor pedals work and do I actually need to get one. So I thought I'd try and make a video on one to try and help you, um, help you make up your mind if you actually need one or not. So what I'll do in this video is I'll look at how a compressor works, its features, and some ways we can use it as well in more of the math rock kind of style so playing tapping or fast kind of lead parts or picking chord patterns or finger picking quite quickly yeah it tends to be quite useful for all of those things I just mentioned so in principle uh, a compressor pedal it um, boosts the lower volumes while it squashes higher volumes depending how you set the level there so when you if you've used the compressor pedal before so let's say when you engage it you get a slight bit of hiss because it's, it's boosting the volumes ready to go for you for ready for the compressor to kick in so um, the compressor I have here is a Boss CS3. I think it's a great compressor. It has all the features you get on many compressor pedals and it's around uh, 70 to 90 dollars depending where you're looking for it. So this is one I recommend if you do want to get a compressor. Um, they do vary in price but you can find lots of reviews and I'll put this one in the description so you can go and check that out. So let's, so let's jump straight into the features. So this is my clean turn. I'm plugged straight into my uh, audio interface here, so there's no modulation from the amp or any of the pedals. And I'm just straight into the um, compressor pedal here. So on the features here, we have level, tone, attack, sustain. And as I said, you'll find these on most uh, compressor pedals out there. So the level, if we engage it, see, so you might hear that hiss again there. So the level obviously just controls the volume counterclockwise, turn the volume down, clockwise, yeah, you can turn the volume up quite loud but it also increases the uh, hiss there as well. So next we have the tone control, so turn this counterclockwise to really flatten the signal and then clockwise to really make the uh, signal, sharpen the signal right there. So I like that around 12 o'clock myself. Uh, next one is attack. So this one is basically how quick the uh, compressor kicks in when you're playing. So it sounds more smoother when you have the attack lower and when you have the attack higher it sounds a bit more pronounced, a bit more sharper and defined. So uh, I like it around one or two o'clock depending on what I'm playing but let's say you're playing um, Let's say you're playing some like fast kind of fast legato y kind of piece like that, for example. And you want to sound it a bit more precise. So if we turn the attack all the way up. It sounds a bit more precise and a bit more uh, noticeable than if we have it on, on zero. It's a bit more not as sharp and as not as defined. So that's really up to your choice there. And same for um, if you're picking as well. So having the attack on full. can sound it a bit more precise. It's good for those really quick kind of leads. And what it's also good for is um, so like fast kind of tapping as well. So we'll look at that in a bit after the features. And then lastly, we got the sustain here. So turning it down, it acts as a limiter. So it limits the volume. And then turning it up, turning it all the way up, uh, it acts as it has more sustain to it, right? It's controlling the sustain of how long it holds the signal for. So you can go on forever when you've got it on full. Uh, I find it's best around about one or two o'clock. So it's also, this is the, uh, the how the compression works as well, using the sustain control. So for example, if I play really loud like that, it will suddenly squash that louder volume and bring it down uh, to a level. 
level plane. So hopefully that you can hear what's going on there, right? The way it's um, you know letting go of the volumes and and um, you know squashing the louder volumes. So if we want to see how it really works, the compressor, we need to look at more of the lower volumes there, because that's what it's trying to boost the lower sound and squash the uh, higher volumes there to give you more of a, a level sound. So yeah, now we've looked at the features, we'll we'll move on to uh, sh I'll show you some examples of how you can actually use this. So let's say I turn it off for a second and you've got some kind of tapping part that you want to play. Bit of Yvette Young there. But so these The taps sound like quite weak, not very defined, and maybe this uh, lower string as well is kind of overpowering the other string. So this is where we can use the compressor to balance out those volumes. So if we engage it, and let's try the uh, same same thing again. You may notice there that the uh, the taps are suddenly shining through just a little bit more, the more subtly there, and the the uh, low E string here that's tuned to F is has uh, been leveled out as well. It's like you know, it's controlling how loud the volume is there. So this is why it's quite good for tapping, and especially if you're playing in clean as well, and you want to have that balanced sound it's going to reduce your dynamic range there so you get that trade-off with having a, uh, a much better signal but your dynamic range isn't so good anymore uh, it's also good for um it sounds a bit too much there right so turn it down a bit evening out volumes when you finger pick or are arpeggiating chords. So without it on, some of the, the all the levels sound a bit uneven, but with it on, they all sound a bit more even, right? So you have to mess around with the sustain level there and the attack to get the desired compression you want, so it doesn't sound too artificial and it sounds more natural. And lastly, like we said earlier, it's good for those um, like fast kind of lead parts that I've shown you an example of already. So if you do play that kind of style, especially if you're playing in clean as well, it's really useful for getting that leveled out sound. But um, it doesn't always work on everything, right? So if you're playing some kind of um, you know some chord progression and you really want to have that dynamic say, you know, the louder and the quieter to dynamics, then you wouldn't put the compressor on at that time. I did watch a rig rundown of Chun recently, and they have the, uh, I think it's the, uh, I forget the name of the pedal, it's a earthquake device one, the, the Warden I think it's called, and that's their compressor, and they have it on all the time, and you can see with their music they play quite intricate riffs and, um, you know, they arpeggiate a lot of chords, so for them it really helps balance out that, out that sound. Uh, so that's it for this video, so I hope I've uh, covered all of your queries there. If not, do leave some questions below and we can all have a discussion about that hopefully. As I said, I'll put a link uh, for this particular compressor in the description so you can go and check that out if you want to. And as always, uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.